Good morning. It's Friday, November 15th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Standing in the Line of Judgment. In our scripture is 2 Samuel, chapter 21, and also Paul's second letter to the Thessalonian believers. We have two passages today, both hard to hear, both with questions that leave us wanting answers. The first lesson is a story from King David's time of long past sins of Saul that have serious consequences for his children and grandchildren. The other passage is Paul's New Testament take on the suffering Christians were enduring. First, Second Samuel. There was a famine during David's reign that lasted for three years, so David asked the Lord about it. And the Lord said, The famine has come because Saul and his family are guilty of murdering the Gibeonites. So the king summoned the Gibeonites. They were not part of Israel, but were all that was left of the nation of the Amorites. The people of Israel had sworn not to kill them, but Saul, in his zeal for Israel and Judah, had tried to wipe them out. David asked them, What can I do for you? How can I make amends so that you will bless the Lord's people again? Well, money can't settle this matter between us and the family of Saul, the Gibeonites replied. Neither can we demand the life of anyone in Israel. What can I do then, David asked. Just tell me and I will do it for you. Then they replied, It was Saul who planned to destroy us, to keep us from having any place at all in the territory of Israel. So let seven of Saul's sons be handed over to us, and we will execute them before the Lord at Gibeon, on the mountain of the Lord. All right, the king said, I will do it. The king spared Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, who was Saul's grandson, because of the oath David and Jonathan had sworn before the Lord. But he gave them Saul's two sons, Armone and Mephibosheth, whose mother was Rizpah, daughter of Aiah. He also gave them the five sons of Saul's daughter, Mirab, the wife of Adriel, son of Barzillai, from Meholah. The men of Gibeon executed them on the mountain before the Lord. So all seven of them died together at the beginning of the barley harvest. Then Rizpah, daughter of Aiah, the mother of two of the men, spread burlap on a rock and stayed there the entire harvest season. She prevented the scavenger birds from tearing at their bodies during the day and stopped wild animals from eating them at night. When David learned what Rizpah, Saul's concubine, had done, he went to the people of Jabesh-Gilead and retrieved the bones of Saul and his son Jonathan. When the Philistines had killed Saul and Jonathan on Mount Gilboa, the people of Jabesh-Gilead stole their bodies from the public square of Bethshan, where the Philistines had hung them. So David obtained the bones of Saul and Jonathan, as well as the bones of the men the Gibeonites had executed. Then the king ordered that they bury the bones in the tomb of Kish, Saul's father, at the town of Zelah in the land of Benjamin. After that, God ended the famine in the land. And then Paul makes sense of persecution in the light of somebody else's sin in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Dear brothers and sisters, we can't help but thank God for you because your faith is flourishing and your love for one another is growing. We proudly tell God's other churches about your endurance and faithfulness in all the persecutions and hardships you're suffering. And God will use this persecution to show his justice and to make you worthy of his kingdom for which you are suffering. In his justice, he will pay back those who persecute you, and God will provide rest for you who are being persecuted, and also for us when the Lord Jesus appears from heaven. So we keep on praying for you, asking our God to enable you to live a life worthy of his call. May he give you the power to accomplish all the good things your faith prompts you to do. Then the name of our Lord Jesus will be honored because of the way you live, and you will be honored along with him. Because we've all experienced being sinful, we can understand our need of grace, but we do wonder sometimes at the harshness of God's judgment especially why God precipitated what would lead to the execution of two of Saul's sons and five grandsons. Saul was the one who sinned. 
At back of our wonder over such things is a question. Is that consistent with a loving God? And faith must answer, of course. For you today, one day when Christ comes to judge, we will have all the answers we ever wondered about. For this day, don't worry about what you don't understand. If you wonder, ask again. He'll either give you an answer or peace about letting it rest. Don't be distracted from serving him by what you don't know. Put to use that which you do know. Tell others how he saved your soul. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.